quorum, we'll get the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Agenda. I move. Second. Okay. All in favor? So much for that. Public forum. This is where we have a chance to make comments on anything not on the agenda. All right. So much for public forum. Approve the minutes of March 27th. I'm sorry. To me, I'll make a motion to be approved with written. Okay, motion's been made. Second. And second. All in favor? And I'll abstain because I wasn't there. <coughs> and no committee and board reports? No. <coughs> Bless you. Thank you. Manager's report. Part time town clerk position. Yeah, it's just to uh, advise you all at this point that the uh, clerk's position is now, I've begun advertising it. Uh, in the hopes that we'll have a, um, a positive uh, vote at the annual town meeting, um, it's in the. It should be in the paper. We've got it on the our internet as well as I put it on the MMA website. So hopefully I've received one applicant already. Um, hopefully we'll get more. Um, I think it's a great opportunity for somebody who may want to transition into municipal government and looking for a career in it. I think it's an excellent opportunity to get your feet wet. So hopefully we'll have a bunch of applicants that we'll have uh, that can fill that position for us. The next thing that we had was just a, uh, as you well know, you have the, uh, uh, the Southern Maine uh, Veterans Memorial Cemetery Association here. They have sent you a uh, nice little thank you card along with a nice little color of, uh, of your uh, your award uh, or give them the, 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 the check. So, and um, I just wanted to make sure that you uh, got uh, acknowledgement of that as well. Um, received a, a letter from the state uh, reference to contact information on the, the rumble strips that you know this summer on the Route 1 corridor portions of it. They'll be installing rumble strips. We now have a contact information. I wanted you to have it in the event that you could contact by any of our, um, our residents in reference to uh, why it's going in and, and be able to provide them a contact person to talk to. Okay. The uh, who is next, right. Oh. Right. next thing I have would be a little, uh, a little more take a little longer to explain. Um, last week, I, during the torrential rain that we had, I had a, um, a resident from Curtis Road, uh, Matt Tardif, uh, contact me in reference to what he felt was uh, perhaps a culvert that was over flooding as a result of some of the work that we had done on the, on the public portion of the road. Uh, the water was flowing pretty good. Roger and I went down to, to look at this. Um, I think we concluded that uh, on that portion of, the, of Curtis Road, I think the culverts failed more than it's uh, reached its capacity. Uh, it is kind of high and the water was still flowing a little bit, but you really couldn't tell uh, the, uh, the beginning or the end of the culvert. And on the, on the end, on the discharge end, it looked like it was uh, water material was swirling off the top of the road into the culvert. Um, Mr. Tardif came in and see me the following day after Roger and I took a look at it, and I explained to him that, in my view, that is the it, uh, that is the public easement portion of the road, and for the town to expend any funds there we would have to get not only the blessing of the Board of Selectmen to do it, but ultimately uh, have a warrant article in front of the annual town meeting warrant 
to, uh, to perform any work there. Um, it's a simple job, but as I explained to him, there was nothing I could do unless, uh, unless authority was granted to us. So I didn't know um, how you have um, proceeded with these, with these uh, requests in the past, uh, if, if they've ever come up, uh, how you wanted to deal with it. Um, and sort of, I just wanted to set it out there for, the, for some discussion with the fact that uh, you felt it, uh, it warranted it. Roger's here, he can sort of fill in the uh, technical details and aspects of what he observed out there as well. But for me, more of it's a, a, a fundamental and procedural thing. If we're going to get involved, if we are, um, if we've done that before, if we're setting a precedent that maybe um, maybe something a little more than we want, I'm not sure. So. Did it fail because of the work that we had done with the ditching? It's failed because it's rusted out. Is that the one that's right at the bottom of the hill? Yeah, right, at the bottom of the hill the between Freddy's and the first house in the field, which was, was yeah, but not this different over there. Yeah. I, I'm not sure who that is. I think your grandfather put that in, probably about 1966. Yeah. Anything more? Yeah. 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 That's, I mean, I'm sure any work we did further up has put more water down there, but this is not the case. And there was a wash out there. And, it was because water was running down off the hill to that spot and the lowest point was in one of the wheel ruts. So it ran down the road and then as it got off the road at the low point, it washed out part of it. But this thing, it's, it's pretty obvious that it's failed, but I went there again today and you still can't see the pipe. So. The road's not impassable. It's not. No, it's not impassable. But I think there's a problem with the pipe because there's a sinkhole that's starting to show up and usually when you've got a hole in the culvert and the high water gets in, swirls around it, washes out dirt around the culvert, then the sinkhole and appears in the surface. So it's not that slow right now, but I bet it will be soon then. Right? Just for a little information, uh, I was invited to look at that road, I think it was three years ago, to do some work on it and to bring it up to grade and First thing I suggested to them was to replace that culvert and upsize it three years ago. And it was kind of the normal way to go. The culvert further up, closer to where the public easement ends, there's a good sized pond on Dick Bowles. Yeah, I believe there was another, there's a swale there, and I believe there's another culvert up there that you can't even see. It's, it's pretty obvious over the course of time when the block was running out of it before, but it's not right now. So there's a pond right up against the road too. So it's it's more than just that pipe that's at issue here. Mr. Tardiff is here. He just walked in, so yeah. he may want to just. We're talking about the the call of it, and uh, as I told you in my office, the difficulty that I presently have, or the town has, mm -hmm. because only there's a public easement there, we have to get approval. Mm -hmm. through not only the board, but a town meeting vote in order to spend any money there. Right. So that's where we are right now. Um, I know we talked on the phone about some of the efforts that you you folks have made on the road at this point. I don't know if you want to share them at all. Well, the efforts, the efforts are kind of beyond us at this point. There's nothing else we can really, nothing else we can really do. Um, so I don't know what you've gone over so far, but yeah, that, that culvert is, has, has been in pretty rough shape for a while now, uh, but it was, it was doing its job. Uh, but with the new traffic that it's getting from the system that was put up at the top of the road and then through uh, Angie's couple driveways there and then I think one at Nally's, I mean, you can almost kayak on that river that it's creating. Very well, very well done. But it's all going downstream to a culvert that was just doing its job, you know, prior to that. So all this, all this additional water, it, it, it just can't handle it. So it's flooding over and it's taking the the base of the road from underneath the uh, the gravel right away, and it's just it, we can't we can't do anything about it. So, Roger, this is beyond what you're going to potentially pay. Mm -hmm. 
this the public section right now that the town owns is 1600 feet and I think from that sacred maple tree wherever the line is right next to that to what would be Dick Belanche's driveway which is what used to be the old tail farm so we had town discontinued that other section it's almost identical as far as footage so it's another 1600 <coughs> foot section and that pipe is probably in the middle of that roughly not quite in the middle of it but reasonably close to 800 feet beyond the town's maintenance section kind of cost of that project Probably 2,500 bucks roughly in a, in a pipe. That would be long enough. The, the other part of the problem is there is that is pretty narrow right through there. That pipe is, you can't even see the ends of the pipe. So you'd have to extend a little bit and boss the road out some. So it's not just a simple replacement. It's a little longer pipe and a little wider road to handle it. But that 2,500 bucks for the pipe. To handle the pipe. Whatever labor or whatever else would be and about the top of that. Some material. All told, our grant would probably do it easy enough between materials, but that's not a contract price that going into it. I'm talking about materials. Yeah, our proposal if you if you decided to do it would be to allow the Public Works Department to <clears throat> do that task. I think they're, they're totally adequate in order to perform it. But again, um, we need certain permissions in order to extend that onto that. Is there a road maintenance agreement at all with the, with the lesser residents on that one? No. There is. Yeah, yeah. Probably it should be. Not the yeah. public easement portion. <coughs> at least to your yeah. private easement. Beyond right, yeah, easement. beyond that, we, right. we have right. one and we maintain it. But not on the public either. No, uh, I mean, we, we do, we throw money at right. the public easement part of it, but I mean, this is way beyond us. We're doctors, mortgage guys, semiconductor, mm -hmm. engineers, so we can't, you know, we can't place a culvert. So you should be at all, the culvert cul cul was, it was probably small to begin with, um, but never used to be a pond there. I mean, there's always be water there. Right now, it is a pond now. I mean, it's, and the pond used to be at Belanger's in his field right there. That used to be, my kids just skate there, used to be so much water. Now it just goes right straight through, and the bottleneck is that culvert now. They used to move, used to move the bottleneck over. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it can't be a coincidence that since the work uphill up the street, you know, and, and again, very, very well done. It, it's great. You know, all that water coming down, roads now washing out. Well, you understand we're kind of hamstrung here. We, we've got to go to the, the voters, the Warren article, requesting some dollar amount to throw it, place in this, so it'll be an up and down vote. If, Put it on the June town meeting warrant article. So hopefully you can get to June. <laughs> so how did and the same thing had to happen when you went on Angie's and Mally's property? Existing uh, existing public public there was existing public oh, existing culverts. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is existing. Yeah, it, I, that's already. on the public way. Right. So the public. It's on the private property. It's in the driveway, though. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Once the, the the statute here is a public way, once this, once the, the homeowner pays for the first one, and then after that, it's the responsibility of the of the town to maintain those culverts that are in driveways, if it's on a public way, town way. So, I, I'm not sure where you want to where, where you want to go with this. Uh, and I, you know, I guess maybe the further discussion, how many public easements do we actually have? Right. Raj, do you know? I, I looked today, I, I couldn't find it that we have a significant amount of them. And have we ever had this experience in the past? Uh, I don't know if anybody would know. No, I think I this is no. <coughs> a first. 
first. <laughs> the only other road I know of that in AD is Hayes Mills Road. Hayes Mills Road. Hayes Mills Road. How about Drew's Mills Road? Well, we don't want to. Where it turns it and there's a lot of pit. So beyond that, it's just totally private. So I don't, mind. Mm -hmm. so I don't know if there's a public easement beyond. Uh, that was discontinued uh, back in the, I want to say in the 70s, early 70s, or late 60s. It got discontinued. set it up there in, in these types of situations. I, you know, if we were looking at, you know, because the road's bumpy and, you know, they're not, there's no gravel there, I, I mean, I think you got a different issue. But right now we're getting to a point that if it fails entirely, that these citizens may not have an ability to get into their property under the floor. And they will have to then take steps. Yeah. If nothing's done, they'll have to take their own steps to correct it. It's not just them, it's emergency services. Correct. Well, yeah, I mean, we got this four little kids out there. That, you know, it's, right now, you can barely fit a car through it. Um, you know, and every time, so every time it rains now, I got to throw 500 bucks at this, you know, hole. It just... Well, you do understand that if we say put it on a warrant, nothing's going to happen until after the June meeting. Yeah. There's nothing that we can do until after the time. So what is the warrant? What is that? that when we have our town meeting, so yeah. it'll be voted by the townsfolk in, in June. That's when our town meeting is. So there's nothing that can be done until then. All right. So, I yeah, the annual town meetings, uh, June 14th, I think, we'll have it at the, right here. Well, everybody comes together and they vote the municipal budget. Mm -hmm. And part of that would have, if they approve it, part of it would have this as a warrant article to expend up to $5,000 to make this repair. And what happens in the meantime if we get a bad rainstorm and the runoff from our section of the road washes out their section of the road? Well, I, I, under, I understand that, that what, what they're saying and I think that, uh, you know, a common sense would say that we probably had uh, in abundance a little more water than was there before. But I think that the culvert, as you described today, has been there probably since 1966. I think the culvert's failing as well. Um, you know, I don't that, that's believe. one of those kinds of things that, you know, I don't know much about. If the culvert was in fine working order, would it take care of all the water? I'm not sure, but we, I think we have two issues here. Water volume, failing culvert. Well, I think that the failing culvert, yeah, there's the, the, the pond that was there before, it wasn't really a pond, it was more marshy. You know, not that cat nine tails, but now, now it's a pond. I mean, there'll be bass in that this year. It, it's a pond. So, I, used to, I used to walk through that. I used to hike. I used to walk right through that area. Yeah. So, so it's just, yeah. Was it perfect there before? No, but it was doing its job enough that we could drive to our houses every day. Now, it's not. And, I mean, it kind of scares me that it comes to a vote from everyone in the town <laughs> so if I can get into my driveway or not. But uh, if that's what it is. Should uh, there's, you bring everybody to town meeting? There's, what, five houses up there, $30,000 worth of property taxes. Every, every one of us has, what, three to five vehicles for those excise taxes are supposed to go to the road. I understand that, but it's, it's, not our, it's not our land. It's not our road. Well, there's an easement, though, and a public easement. It's not like... So when the uh, culverts are fixed, the rule is that the law well, ordinance says that if they fix the culverts, on the private driveways, how far in? Is there the limit, or we, we don't we don't fix culverts on public on, on private driveways. You got a public road that if it's a public road, if it's a town road, yeah. and then if the drive if the driveway culvert fails after the first initial installation, it's the responsibility of the municipality to maintain. Well, I think so. If you had, if you were on say Limerick Road, 
in your culvert field going into your driveway, then we would uh, we would have to be obligated to take care of that. Kind of the same thing. Unfortunately, the law is strike quite clear on it. Um, you know, uh, yeah. between between your public way, a town way, a public easement, and it and it, it you know uh, our hands are tied until we get that vote. Mm. If they decide to put it on, then we can go ahead and, and make some corrections for you. So if the town does work on the, their side of the road and it impacts the private side of the road, it's kind of tough luck to go to a vote? Yeah. Okay. It's public money on private property. Yeah, but the, the public, I mean, if I did that to Steve's driveway, we'd go to court and I'd lose. And I'd have to pay it anyway. You know, it's I can't just ruin someone else's property to better mine. You'd be surprised. So, what, what do you what do you guys want to do? I mean, I guess I'd have to ask Roger if there's something that we can temporarily do to help divert some water. At least to buy a little bit of time. Pam, I believe that that culvert has got some holes in it. If you look at it, there's a sinkhole showing up in the roadway on the left hand side headed in towards the other point. I could see where they fixed up some the other day, but there's gravel going through the outlet of that pipe. And it's coming from around that pipe somewhere on the road. You still can't even see the pipe itself to judge just what's probably in do you know how deep under the culvert is from the oh, whole this whole field cover over that pipe probably. probably. And it's washing away from the inside. When the sinkhole's showing up. So that pipe obviously has a hole in it around it or where the van used to be or, or something. And the water's also two feet above the pipe when it when it rains, but I mean yeah, there may be a hole in there. Yeah, usually the water's down, you can see the culvert usually. The water is yeah. it's probably three foot high, but I bet you. The yeah, culvert's full, full of gravel. Yeah, because that hasn't been a pond since way back in the in the fifties. Yeah. 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 It kind of grew up into just okay. cat nine tails and I'm not sure it was last year, but two years ago, somebody was with me and we went down there just to see what was going on yeah. because somebody was complaining about it then. <laughs> and that looked like going all the way back to the woods. Yeah. Ooh. Before yeah. any road work was done. So I mean this didn't just crop up. I'm sure we put more water downstream, but this has been a problem. And right now, I think, yeah, there's a couple of problems. One is probably the pipe, definitely, if you replace it, needs to be upsized. But the other part of it is if that pipe is a metal pipe that's been in there since 1966. Oh, before, I can't somebody imagine. Somebody should take a lot of pictures of yeah. himself, because it will be absolutely junk. I can't imagine Evan put a new culvert in there when he that's the flying one, because yeah. when that road was redone yeah. and that was sold those pieces off, yeah. somebody was supposed to build the road. They may have, but if they did, it was put in, well, even then, it was put in not much after, not much after that. It would have been. Still be back up in the 70s. No. He sold that off and that was done, that was early 90s. When did you buy it? Up to then. 95? Well, for that. Yeah, I, you know, I would arbitrarily put it on. It's your warrant. You'd have to you know, decide whether or not you want to put it on. If you decide to put it on, uh, we'll place it on the warrant. So we need a motion and a second. We'll have to discuss it with the budget board yeah. on Wednesday, Wednesday night, night to get either, because it's a dollar issue, they're going to have to give a recommendation on the, on the vote. Yes or no. Same with you. If that culvert's half full of gravel, that would that could be the bulk of the problem right there. If it could be cleaned out somehow, they have jet cleaners that can clean it. And because uh, that's what 15 inch, right? Can you even tell? Can't even tell. What Can't tell. I'm down around it today too. There's um, still think, enough water going through it. That I think when it. I looked at that road two or three years ago, that I concluded that it was a 15 inch, and there was some dirt in it then. 
and if it's got more dirt in it now that you know 15 inch culvert half full of water half full of dirt is going to take a very small amount of water yeah I mean, I'm certainly in favor of this but I you know, hate to wait till June you know we have a there's something that we can do in the meantime but you know we have an issue where you know if we have a bad rainstorm and then we need emergency services there obviously you can get in from the other side but they won't know that. That's, that's not the case. No. That is not the case. Yeah, but if it's emergency services, today you talked about that. He was adamant about that. Adamant. Take that to court. I mean, if you're trying to save somebody's life and, uh, and they have to go in there. Lives come to a full degree. I'd go in if I was driving that. <laughs> Pushing them around. Yeah. <laughs> I have to talk to him on the way out, but bring him over. Yeah. So. You got to stop on the way out, right? Mm -hmm. I'll be behind you. I'll make the motion to put it in front of the voter. Mm -hmm. I think we're obligated to do it. I'll second that. Okay, motion's made and seconded. If it's in front of the voters, we'll talk to the budget board on Wednesday night. All in favor? It's the best we can do right now, guys. Thank you. You're welcome. Watch for June town meeting. Make all your notes. Bring it, bring all the neighbors to the town meeting. And uh, have all your good reasons right now. So you know. I think you guys ought to keep a good eye. If the water yeah. starts to go down, and maybe you get a, you know, a bunch of people in there to help you know, look at it and try to... Clean some of that dirt yeah. out of there. It's, it's down a couple of feet already. Possibility it was, where, where yeah. the hole is to dig that up and lay something on top and recover it for now, but yeah. you know, I don't know. Yeah, we'll see if you get at it. Yeah. yeah, an idea what to do at that point. But yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, if you can blast it out, great. I don't need a shiny new color, I just need to be able to get home. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Well, actually, I, I just wanted to to advise you because one of the neighbors on Old Post Road had contacted me after the fact about a hydraulic oil spill that had occurred on uh, Old Post Road evidently a vendor coming out of Champagne Energy had blown a hydraulic hose and uh, they went up the road heading up to one and then into Biddeford before they were stopped. Um, our fire department responded. Um, Contacted DEP. DEP, DEP uh, showed up at the at the site, um, indicated what remedial action had to be done to try to clean it up, and then the the uh, contractor who had this spill brought personnel in to clean up as much as they could after the fact. The the issue that we had from the neighbor is that he was upset that he wasn't notified that there was a spill. Um, I tried to explain to him that, you know, on a general course of business that we wouldn't notify you of a, of a spill. I think because of what oil does when water gets it, it sheens so much that I think there was uh, a concern, a viable concern for them, that there was more there and it was more of an issue than it actually was. I think that we did the best we could to uh, get it cleaned up and that DEP provided the instructions that we needed in order to do it. So was it raining at the time that this happened? Um, no, I think it was in between. Um, but and then and then finally under my report uh, the status of the around the cruiser, they did total our, our cruiser. Um, the new one is on site at the sheriff's office, uh, sheriff's department being outfitted um, they said a couple weeks. We should see it back on the road in, in Arundel. So that's the fastest we've ever had two new cruises. Like <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we really wanted no. it, but we got it. But he was okay. He wasn't hurt in the. No one was that's hurt in the accident. But it was hurt. The Arundel police cruiser was in an automobile accident several weeks ago. I told it. Yeah, slow down. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That, that wraps up my manager's report. Okay. How about uh, 
New business, field fees and user agreements. Yes, we have uh, uh, Jen here this evening to just broadly discuss this issue. And, yes, I can, um, Thank you. And to uh, you know, give you some, some maybe a some little bit of background to this as well. So I'll give you a little bit of Two years ago, we had a semi pro football team that approached us and wanted to use the field, and we talked about how we might charge for that and that sort of thing. Um, and this spring, we've had a, um, a, an elite youth sports group um, who's not based in Orlando looking to use our field um, for their practices. Um, and they were looking for it to use the field at a time when Little League doesn't generally use it. But um, I started looking through field use policies for other towns, and most towns do have some sort of fee schedule for any entity that's using um, using town owned fields. Um, and in some cases, some of the ones that I discussed were community groups have an agreement with the town where they contribute to field upkeep or improvements, um, you know, clean up things, things like that, in lieu of fees. Uh, but generally, there were fees for out-of-town-based use of the field. Um, there's also the issue of uh, entities who, who are nonprofit, but they aren't um, Federally determined to be nonprofit. Um, so I, I wanted to talk with you. You've got the you've got the policy that we've used to date, and then you also have a policy as proposed, it's kind of a draft based on what I got from other what I pulled from several other communities in the state. But I would see what, what you all think about. Which which field they want you? They want the little league field? And when do they want to use it? They want to use it on Sundays. And I guess for me, this is, this is not so much about that entity wanting to use our field, but the bigger picture. Um, other, other communities in the area do charge for field use, so I can see our, our field being sought out more because there are no field fees to use it. This year, John? How many people are they, like from a parking standpoint? Um, I think just a, just a team. They were looking for practice space. Oh, it's a oh, practice. practice. I don't think that they had secured um, a field to use for games, but I know that they were working with the town that their most of their players are from. Where are the players? Most of them. So some of the um, some of the other towns who have field use policies have, um, you qualify whether you pay a non-resident fee versus a resident fee for using field space based on what percentage of the players on your team are from the town, from Orlando. Uh, so that's one way that some places are doing it. And then some towns, like I said, have a determination whether there's a fee if they're determined, federally determined to be a nonprofit organization versus not. So those are some of the, the things that I've turned up in my research and I thought that I would turn to you and see whether you think a policy and, and fee schedule is necessary in terms of taking care of our field. Well, I think we should have something. I mean, we just can't let anyone go on that field and then we end up with a damaged elevator and no recourse. And I think that, you know, you want to assume the best of people, and I happen to know the person who requested field use, and I wouldn't anticipate that there would be anything bad done. But again, I'm looking at this from a broader perspective, yeah. that it could be anybody. And if we're not charging how many towns are, then why wouldn't they seek out our field? Yeah, what's the age group of this? I'm not sure. What are other towns charging? Um, some are charging by the season, some are charging by the practice, some are, you know, $25 for a practice, um, some are $50 for a practice, and then there are also determinations whether, whether somebody is, um, they live in a town or they don't. For instance, Saco, uh, for a youth 
teams that have 75% or more soccer residents, it's free for athletic field use. If they're non-residents, so it would be $20 an hour, $300 a day. They're all different. I guess it depends on, you know, like, I think it was Poland had like $750 for the season. Um, and they required some sort of contribution to the field. They required cleanup day by the entity, other entities who are using it. Really, it goes, it goes any way you want it to go, but I think I had put $25 per practice or game, or $50 if they're um, non-residents. And I had talked with, I had talked with Keith about it, and he um, wasn't sure that we want to get into private use of the field. Perhaps it would be limited to nonprofits. And would that be, would that require a federal determination? Yeah, those are the questions that... Yeah, a couple of years ago, we decided we didn't want any out-of-town teams in there anymore. The football thing, Foot, that, yeah. that, that, didn't go, that didn't go well. That was a dog, and I think that was heavy yeah. use, yeah. too. Yeah. You know, I think yeah. that... Right. But, again, a broader perspective, it could be anything. Mm. I think for, for me, um, if it was during the Little League season, absolutely, in my view, absolutely not. I think I, I don't want to see our, our young players being called from our Little League program to go play in this elite baseball program. I, that, you know, um, I just fundamentally I have a real issue with that. Um, in terms of after the season, providing an opportunity for these kids in Quite frankly, they pay some good money to be taking part in these elite programs. I don't know what he's charging, um, but I wouldn't be a bit surprised if it's substantial for this individual instruction, and in, as well as uh, um, other elite teams that they'll be playing within the league, um, as I gather. So, and then finally, I don't know how many Arundel kids are actually in it. I, I sort of like the Saco one. If there was 75 percent of these Arundel kids, then I would see, you know, you may you may want to waive a, a fee as a result of that. But I don't think that's the case here. So I think we're strictly this is a strictly business type of decision where individuals looking to rent our facilities in order to accommodate his program. Is this something new? Uh, Elite youth teams are, you know, not brand new, but definitely um, becoming. I don't know if we're all hearing about it, but about elite teams in the area. And it's cold, it's more less than kids can play year round. You know, it's very similar to AAU. Yeah. 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 Are there any Arundel kids on the team? Do you know? I don't know. I know what he had said is that um, anyone from the area was welcome. I mean, I certainly don't want to shut anything for the youth, you know, sports like that. I mean, I'm, I'm certainly in favor of it. I think it's just good to keep the kids busy, especially in something like baseball. Um, but I certainly don't want our field going. I don't think our field would get ruined by it, but it would be nice to put some sort of contribution to the Little League if they're going to use our Little League field. How many times, how many practices does he think he's going to get one to use it? Um, I don't think I printed his emails, but you know, a dozen or ten times, something like that. There were some specific dates. Our little league wants to do new dugouts this year. Mm -hmm. How close are they to having the funds for that? No idea. Mm -hmm. No. Were you at the meeting when they? You must not have been um, when they came to us. Yeah. Talked about doing <coughs> dark oats on the other side of the field. Yeah, soft off I think, is their priority, but they wanted to read it a little bit close too, I think. But they have the money to do it? No. No. Perhaps there could be a reserve set up, and if there were fees being paid in, it could be used for a field, or, you know. Yeah, I think if there were fees set up, that, that definitely they should be used 
to keep the field in shape, yeah. to be used for the field. Yeah. Is the, um, the the equipment to drag? It's been a long time since I've been off. Yeah. <laughs> what do they use to drag the field? It's not ours. And so um, with this particular person, I said you'd have to provide your own equipment, lining, and stuff like that. Those aren't things that we do. Literally does their own. Yeah. And we don't own that equipment to do it. Okay. To me, that would be one of the stipulations. Somebody to use the field and they drag it when they're done. So. Somebody doesn't come in on Monday to do practice and there's yep. all kinds of ruts. Yeah, you feel the band before the practice. Mm -hmm. And this, this is mostly Sunday teams? Just one team though, right? Just one team as far as I know. Yeah. As we know, it's just one team. This gentleman's putting together an elite team that will travel to other towns to participate. He needs a place to practice. Yeah, we, a couple years ago, we traveled all over the county with one of those teams. Okay. My significant other had grandsons in it. I see. We followed them around. And it's so, I agree, I agree with Keith. I don't think we should compete with our little league time at all. I mean, it's after that, after the, 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 it all starts and whatever. And if they want to use the field, I think there should be a fee. There should be insurance in place. Um, there is insurance. Yeah. I did check that. Um, and, uh, but there ought to be a fee in place if they want to dedicate it to a, an account that can be used for improvements to the, the field. facilities out there. Mm -hmm. uh, so would I set it up so that I would ask Little League when is the last day of your regular season? And then if they want to use for the field, if some, another entity want to use the field after that. Mm -hmm. All-Stars also, right? So All-Stars would, would use that throughout the summer until mm -hmm. they're eliminated. Usually it's pretty quick to get eliminated. Well, I think last year, didn't they have um, a game here, uh, one of the tournament games was here? Not here. I thought there was an issue with that. Uh, well, they couldn't use it because there was no parking. They didn't use that field oh, at all last year. But, no parking. but that field qualifies now. It can be used, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For an all-star game, right? And this, this I think we would wave for Little League. Oh yeah. Little yeah. League has done no, great no, things not in that field. I wouldn't, wouldn't want to charge them, but I think that they're a you know community-based right. organization Absolutely. that's definitely in cooperation with the town. Um, so what are we talking? Fifty dollars? A hundred dollars? I guess that's that's up to you. And do you want a federal determination of nonprofit, or is it okay if someone says? You know, this is a nonprofit organization. You can be a nonprofit and not be tax exempt. That's all you get at the federal level. If it's a state organization that would be a nonprofit or not for profit or a corporation or entity. The second Does step is. Does that require an application? You've got to file the state. There just is like, no filing. Just like a corporation, any corporation. Non With this one, there's no filing. So are you suggesting that we require some sort of filing? If they're an entity, they've got to. Who's insured? File. Yeah. You said um, it's a league that they belong to. But to be honest, so the league must, if the league has the insurance, then the league must be the nonprofit entity. Um, I asked him if he had, if he was a nonprofit entity, and he said not legally. Um, puts it through his own taxes, is what he said. There is no. There is no determination. So what does that matter to us? Um, I don't know whether it's tax exempt or not. It doesn't matter to us unless we're making a contribution to it. Yeah. Our contribution would be tax exempt. This gentleman is doing this as, as an individual? Uh, that's what I understand, yes. And I think Whoa. what I had discussed with Keith is, if, you know, do we want to get into private use of the field? Mm -hmm. Because if they don't have a determination, then technically that makes them a private, private. organization and well, a private entity. Individually, you can't be a nonprofit. Yeah, I don't. I didn't get into a yeah, lot of that yeah. with him. I just asked if he had any, you know, legal documentation of the nonprofit status. But he's not insured. It's a league that's it's insured. It's a league that, that his team plays in. That's the, yeah, it's through New England Elite Baseball League. That's who the insurance is through. So is that the person? Is that the entity that the remnant? Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess we should. Have to know that. Yeah. 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 And do you wish to make a determination about 
does somebody need to have at least paperwork filed for nonprofit status? But we should see it if they have fact at the state level. That's, that's where you get it first. Is you, okay. you file the corporate documents that would make you a non not for profit okay. corporation. I mean, whether they go through the five hundred. You know, the application to be right. a 501c3 yeah. or B or whatever in the world it is, I mean, right. that's up to them. I mean, that's uh, whether they're tax exempt doesn't mean anything to us. Okay, so I was using the term improperly, right. federal yeah. versus state. There's no, yeah. Okay. I mean, if, if it's the league that's insured, but we're going to be renting the field to him, what good is the insurance? Because the league isn't renting the field. My thought. I mean, if the league is renting the field and the league has the insurance, that's fine. But you'd have to look at what the structure is of the league. I yeah. mean, he may be covered under that insurance policy itself. I mean, that's, that, that's, I wouldn't be surprised if that were so. All the coaches, all the, would be uh, insured. Uh, yeah. But, um, but I think we'd we have to find out, you know, who's our tenant, so to speak. Mm. Well, if they're a, if they're a private. And we, and we rent it out and somebody gets hurt real bad. Are we, uh, is there any liability on us? So, uh, everybody's always looking for deep pockets, so <laughs> they'll, they'll give it a shot. Okay, I won't be successful, but they'll give it a shot. The question is, do you want to rent to private entities, or do you want to limit it to nonprofit entities? No, I, I guess I would ask, what's the difference? We rent it to a private entity, or we write, or rent it to a non-private. I mean, to a, well, I mean, if, if it's a private entity, as these AIU teams uh, are, we charge a lot of money, to make money. Um, I'm not sure that we want to be involved in that enterprise. Uh, you know, if it's a non-profit <coughs> and they're just doing this for the kids, you know, and they're trying to keep the, the books balanced, so to speak. Um, right. And that's all. That's another. It's not the story as far as I'm concerned. I'm not sure I want to rent it out to folks who are going to charge some kid 175 or 200 bucks and then pay us 50. And he's got a, well, know, 15 structure, kids on the team. I mean, we could structure that in an agreement, right? If it's a private entity, we charge X amount. If it's a non private, we charge X amount. You can I do that or just don't say we don't do it to private yeah, entities yeah. at all. I'm, I'm just trying to understand the difference. Yeah. I, don't, you know, I guess uh, I, I think what we're looking here is the flavor. Is, is it do you guys really want us to pursue renting it to a private entity or a private nonprofit or a business? And if you do, fine, we can we can work those details out. If, if the answer is no, then our conversation will be over tonight. Again, yeah, for me, anytime we get kids out out of the house playing whatever, I'm for it. It's not on the dollar. Will that work? Is that enough now, Jen? Um, yeah. well. <laughs> she doing that. Yeah. No. I've got one that's saying any kids, and I've got one that's saying non-profit. What does everybody else say? I mean, well, we only have one request anyway. We should figure out what he is. Yeah. He's not currently that he's not currently doesn't have any paperwork and to be a nonprofit, but he said if I put if I put in an application and provided you with a copy, would that work? Would that be enough? Because I said I wasn't sure if the town was going to be willing to rent to somebody who's not a nonprofit. And he said, well I can put in an application and is that a nonprofit? What? Is the league nonprofit? No. no. It's an elite baseball team and I would guess no, but I don't know. Yeah. Usually the elite teams are Nonprofit, which is the actual, and they tend to rent space, you know, at places like at Gus Sports or the Dome in Portland, where they're paying big, big money. So if they can get, you know, a field here, we wouldn't provide the same service at a big company, a big place like that, would though, because we wouldn't be dragging their fields for them and lying on that sort of thing. But that could lead to a lot of use. So this is the first one, but this could lead to something larger. And I thought, you know, before we set a precedent, let's talk and see which guys. What do you think? I'm for it.
for it. Yeah, we'll see the face plate. What the heck I agree with Tom too, if somebody's making two or three thousand dollars and they're paying us twenty five or fifty dollars, I don't seem very fair to not see that. And they they do their own cleanups and maintenance of the field and everything. I did add some of that language into the into the application that requires them to clean up and you know carry and carry out and that sort of thing. I know Faith did it for two years and it was five hundred dollars. And I'm glad she doesn't do it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so they're definitely she, making some money. Where is she practicing? Where was she practicing? West Kennywell. But we would struggle to get field time because right. of this situation. Right. Yeah. There were only certain players in the, you know what I mean? So there were only like three fields in your county to choose from. Right. So I can see why he's reaching out to more fields because there isn't any. Right. But I can tell you there's, there's money there for a substantial fee. Right. And I'm sure that the entity that played with was paid big money for the West Canyon field. Yeah, I don't know. That I don't know. What are the fees for the West Kennebunk field? Um, I don't know if I have Kennebunk's fee schedule with me, but it's definitely higher for nonprofits, and they're lower down on the scale. Um, Kennebunk does allow nonprofit or other entities to rent field space um, after their own have been accounted for. You know, after <coughs> after Kennebunk will leave. That's what this would be after our own or accounted for. Now, what are, what are your thoughts on what Tom suggested in terms of renting during the Little League season versus following the Little League season or in the offseason? See, I'm with him on that one because yeah. we've been out back before and been pushed off our own field. And that's that's a bummer to the kids. I don't know if anybody's been out there recently, but in the last couple of years, they've done some improvements to that field that I walked out there last year, and it's like, I don't remember seeing that field. That's awesome. Being involved with Little League years ago when we had clean up days and did work there, they've done a good job. It's, the fields have never been better shaped than they are right now. Right. We also it wouldn't be about fair to bring somebody yeah. else to do anything to this field after what Little League's done. Yeah. And does, he hasn't spoken to Little League about this, have you? No. Okay. Um, just because I wanted to see what you had to say. Interested to see what their reaction. Yeah, I yeah. mean, they may feel like, gosh, we've done all this work. Right. Yeah. They, they spend a lot of volunteer time. They sure say. have. Mm -hmm. There's a but, lot of dedication there. So I, 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 I sense that, I sense that a lot of you want us to look yeah. at it a little more. Um, I, I'm not opposed to having kids having other opportunities to play. There seems to be some concerns whether or not we're, we'd be encroaching on uh, what really has to do. We should be looking at that a little bit more and come up with a uh, non-profit and for-profit fee schedule and bring that back to you folks uh, for something uh, as a proposal. Yeah. I mean, you know, Little League may come to us and say, you know, hey, we don't want any on that field. And so you will have to right. make, take that in consideration. That sound reasonable? It does. I would, I would like to get more of a flavor of whether this is something that the board wants other entities to use that field during the little league season or only in their off season. I would say only in the off season. Yeah. Even if it's not encroaching on their on we their need, We need to be careful, too, if we let outside teams come in, that our little league volunteers say, Okay, we're out of here. And then who takes care of the field after that? So we've got we to think about that too. Yeah, I don't think we want to be in a situation where these people get done, they spent, they give us some money, but they've left the field in crappy condition. Well, I mean, again, to me, that should be part of what's written down in the agreement. Okay. Right? I mean, during season, I would be okay to say, you know, on Sunday. I mean, nobody goes out there and practices on Sundays, but. Do our little league? We have teams because practice on Sunday like during the week. You might get a rain after the week. Schedule that. Yeah, they're yeah. not done it before. Come to face team. Actually, you know what? We we used to do Sundays. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're always involved. We call parents on Sundays. All stars. We do Sundays a week. It does not anymore. I don't know. I believe it is by the league. 
They don't use it on Sundays. The league does not use it on Sunday, even for practice. I don't think they're allowed to anymore. Some of the league rules, the way they are. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, it might have been Little League itself. Yeah. Not not the Arundel, but Little League itself. Well, in that case, if the field isn't being used, and I don't have a problem that they used it during the season, as long as our own Little League isn't being infringed upon at all. Yeah, I've talked with the Little League. Yeah, get a schedule. Yeah, let's get let's get yeah. a sense of what right. Little League thinks okay. about this. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Okay. I think we got to come up with uh, a couple of fee schedules, nonprofit and yeah. profit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and I think it's, if it's profit, inside. a good fee schedule. Yeah. Yeah. If Little League says no, they don't want anybody, then yeah. I'll stand behind. You know, I'll stand behind Little League. I mean, I, again, I'd like to get kids out there, but. It, I know the time and effort that it takes for that field because you know I spent some time there also, so right. I can understand. Okay. All right. We'll do that. Thank you for your time. Oh no! Thank you. Yes, we have a uh, request that's come forward uh, uh, via Bentley's to uh, continue um, a uh, activity that they've been allowed to do in the past, and that was to uh, consume alcohol during uh, on their parking lot during specific events that they're advertising and sponsoring, or having nonprofits come in and you know have activities there, and as well as um, any other uh, activity that may come up uh, through, uh, through, the, uh, through the year. So essentially, I think they're looking for permission to provide it um, in the parking lot uh, during their events or any time they're open during that time that they've significantly given you the, the time frame. Um, last year, I think what had come up was uh, a concern that uh, sometimes these activities at Bentley's were um, so populated and so popular that uh, if there was an emergency, there was uh, a tendency of um, our vehicles or our emergency personnel got in, getting in, in there and uh, being able to render aid. Um, I reached out to both the fire department to see how this past year went after we brought it to the folks down there, as well as the police department. I went to the sheriff's department to see if there were any issues. And both groups have got back to me and said there were absolutely no issues at all. That they were able to get in, uh, be able to accommodate. Uh, the Sheriff's Department got to me and they had no issues uh, with, with, the, with what was going on as well. So, uh, so there have been times where emergency personnel have had to go there. Um, from, from what I understand, yes. Excuse that me. was brought up uh, a couple, I think last year, yeah. I think uh, we brought it up and we followed up on it. Uh, we found that uh, if there was an issue there, uh, this past year we did not have it. Yep. So uh, we didn't have any issues. I've been there on days when, uh, mm -hmm. some of these days, and uh, they have security personnel out there in, I think, bright orange shirts, Correct. making sure that the <coughs> entryways are kept clear so that emergency personnel can get around and making sure people park where they should be parked and not in the sure. way. And we have built a lot of barricades and, and put up a lot of signs that say, um, you know, if your car's here, you're going to be towed, fight away. You know, we, we've, had, we've got them where the road narrows up, so it eliminated a lot of that issue. That's where the issue was a little over two years ago, Keith, was when you go to the campground, somebody just get out of the car and park right there. So, so now we put a full staff out there. So we have anywhere from five to ten people out there parking when it's a busy. Mm -hmm. So it, it it appears to me that uh, their request isn't uh, any more uh, than it was in the past. I, I think some of the uh, scheduled activities are slightly more than they had before. 
but um, even your initial last year's request was to provide them the ability to be out there even if they um, some some activity came up and they were able to schedule it and put it out there um, that they were able to do that as well and you gave them that authority so I think what they're seeking is the authority from uh, to have those events in the weekend from April 21st to October 22nd in their parking lot. Motion on that? Yeah, motion to approve. Okay, we have a second. Second. Any more discussion? Is there any weekend between April 21st or last year and October where you didn't have drinking in the parking lot? Yeah, there's, there's days that, that. How many? Oh, I gotta say a handful. So why, why don't you just ask for it? Well, it's, it's weather driven a lot of times. So the drinking in the parking lot really is just when there's an event. Going when there's an event. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not every day of the week. And, and just so you guys know, we actually, I actually called the head sheriff and we tried to hire them to come in a couple of our events and, and they, they didn't want nothing to do with it. We offered to pay them whatever, whatever it was to, you know, so we can say, this is what we do. I was told that we that they they don't do that at, at events. I actually talked to the lieutenant and the head sheriff. What's his name? Um, well, the deputy uh, chief deputy is Tom Barron, and yeah. the sheriff is uh, Bill King. It was Bill King. I talked to both of them, and they, they oh we don't do that. So you know we try to work with them. As I said, I've been there. I've been drinking in the park. <laughs> I think I took it away from you. you yeah, yeah. <laughs> that every weekend between April. <laughs> <laughs> weather dependent. Yeah, weather dependent. Yeah. Yeah. Get out. That's what I think you get that. Yeah. <laughs> on tape too. Okay. Any more discussion? All in favor? Thank you, guys. Yeah. Will I get something signed? Um, I can send you a letter. That's great. Uh, I'll send you a letter. All right. Get it wrapped up. And there's any, if there's ever a problem, just give us a call. We're the first ones who want to fix it. Great. You know. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Have a good night. Okay. Annual town meeting warrants. Yeah, I, I provided a... A copy, uh, I think what I was primarily trying to do here was to put this in sequential order that you thought that we should have the town meeting when it comes to these things. And what I did was I placed, um, I placed, you know, giving authority to, uh, to sell a piece of town-owned property uh, on, as number one, to purchase a piece as number two, um, and then uh, put the uh, police, the additional uh, deputy sheriff, as number three. So um, essentially, the three largest issues that um, that we would be uh, discussing would not be all over the place. They would be right there, all three in a row. Uh, so I put them at first to get them done, get them over with. And then after that, I just kept the the warrant essentially as we had last year uh, sequentially as, the, as uh, what we've asked for in, in terms of funding. So I wanted to get your thoughts on it. I mean, obviously, um, I'll be asking you to officially um, approve a town meeting warrant at your May 8th meeting. Um, at that point, I will have all of the um, land use documents along with our warrant articles and the package will be together and it will need your signature at that point. But at this point, I'm really looking for guidance. How do you want to structure those dollar amounts uh, from your action tonight? i got to put another one in there to, to seek five, up to $5,000 uh, to repair that, uh, that covenant on the public easement on Curtis Road. So um, 
Other than that, uh, I'm up. I'm up for any suggestions you have. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Shouldn't we reverse? You know, maybe Tom can explain it, but shouldn't we buy and have the ability to buy first before we sell? Before we sell. <laughs> I think the, uh, we got to we got to reword that article, um, and I think Keith has just thrown this out there as, as the sequence right now. But I think we got to. That article's got to be changed to reflect what we're dealing with, the P&S agreement that you're yeah. talking about. And, yeah. uh, um, and we ought to have uh, council review that, too, and make sure that... But, uh, uh, no, I don't, I don't think that's the way it will be worded. But I think that's the sequence it should be. In Otherwise, we should have a discussion of our arrangement with the Arundel Conservation Trust first to get approval for that, then we would then I get seek approval for the town to expend money out of the municipal reserve for our contribution to the, uh, to the purchase price. Because if the first one don't go, the second one doesn't go. I think the first one will give you all the... Yeah. I, I think the first one's going to have all the explanations mm -hmm. to our relationship with ACT, you know, um, what what that's going to, I, as you know, we're working on that now, what that uh, relationship will look like. Um, and so if that approved, if that gets approved, I think the article, the second article will pass as well. Logically. Yeah, yeah. logically. Yeah. Then why wouldn't, um, 175000 for the one, why wouldn't that come right after number three, or number two, rather? Instead of way at the back, that's normal. That's the normal one. Right? We get the additional one. What one are you looking at, Jason? Uh, there's no number, but it's uh, oh, the second page from the that back. Shouldn't, that shouldn't be there. Jason, I'm sorry. Oh, right. That should have oh. been removed. Mm -hmm. That's going to be taken care of in that first article. I'm oh, all right. Okay. 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 Should have removed that. My apologies. All right. And then the other question that I have is: Shouldn't the additional sheriff come after the vote for the existing contract? I know it's further down the line, but we, we vote for the for the regular one that we have today, yeah. and then when we put the voters an additional. We, we can. I, that's why I, I just put it there because I thought we'd get all those issues that I know that people are going to be real passionate about to express their opinions early on in the, in the... But if you think that we need to put it back behind our initial request, I have no objections to that. That's where I, that's where I had it initially, was behind our, our first one. I think you suggested then we bring that bring the existing one forward. Okay. Is that no, what you're saying? I, I had suggested that we that we vote for the town hall stuff first before we vote you know, before we bring uh, the the second sheriff. You know, we vote this I had suggested that we vote this stuff first before that. And, and, and he's got it right. right. Yeah, town hall stuff. But we just start talking about bringing forward the regular police protection article. We, we could do that too. Okay. I, no matter where, I think they should be together, okay. whether it's here yeah. or whether it's further yeah. down in the in, okay. in, uh, in a warrant. Yeah. I think they should be together. Just so the people just, if you're talking about the sheriff, you ought to be talking about the sheriff, mm -hmm. whether it's. Yeah. So I don't have any objection to put it back where I had it before, behind the mm -hmm. uh, the, the our, 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 uh, our initial one. Tom, do you think we should yeah. we should put it behind uh, the one that's further down or bring that one forward? I guess I'm just thinking, I mean, I think the sheriff is going to be there with his presentation. Get him in, get him out. Yeah, I mean, that's <laughs> a very nice presentation, but I mean, I don't want him hanging around while Wiki goes yeah. through all these other articles. That's why I moved it forward. Yeah. Yeah. So I would, I would take the one further down for the existing, put that first. And then we okay, then, so we'll put it we'll put it after the the uh, article three. The article. Okay, yeah. the article three and article four will be the new the additional. 
fun. And then we'll get into the regular operating Article stuff three after that. For police protection, and this okay. will be Article 4. Yeah, those okay. numbers will change because once yeah. I get the. Um, that's why I left them blank at this point. Are there any other suggestions in terms of once we once we get this formalized as to what sequence is going to be, there will be a, uh, a newsletter going out so we can with the explanation so we can provide that. So I'm going to need a little bit of uh, maybe I'll seek some help on that warrant article with uh, with the land thing initially here, um, so we can get that wrapped up. The other thing I'll bring up at your meeting on Wednesday is that I had to, I got the funding, police protection funding for our regular police officer. I thought it was 80, that's what it was the year before. It's gone to 82,566, so they increased it by $2,566. So I added that into, and you'll have to, because you voted already for the 80, I'll have to have you vote on Wednesday for the budget board for the Session 4056A, discussion with public officials. Can I group them both together? And 4056C, discussion of land acquisition. Motion's been made at uh, 810. 810. Second. And second. All in favor? Thank you. 